Okay, I will, um, I'll tell, I started doing poetry um, because somebody told me it was the new rock and roll. And I thought, yeah, I fancy a bit of that action. That's a bit of me. If poetry is the new rock and roll, then in my experience there is one thing, one major, major thing, very much lacking in that equation. And this is what it is. Because I use alert, alive, obliteration. My metaphors are like God's creation. My similes are like waves crashing on the beach of your intellect. My words dazzle with diverse dialect. My rhymes reflect a soul that's no despair. I use allegory and analogy to lay my nature bare. I've even done a love poem to show how much I care. So if poetry's the new rock and roll, if I'm the new poetic Axel Rose, then I need to ask if anybody knows where are all the groupies? I've done sonnets on behalf of the shoeless. I've parodied the politicians to prove they're clueless. I've challenged the social order to protect the weak and frail. I've reminisced with an old folk tale. I've walked the veil of eccentricity and all things odd. I've strutted on the stage like a rock god. I've walked the path that Weller and Strummer trod. So if I write the words that people croon, if I've got the rhythm of Keith Moon, then please can someone tell me soon where are all the groupies? They said if I could write a monologue, I'd be guaranteed a decent snog. They told me poetry was all the rage, and I'd have women queuing up backstage. But all of this performing sent me loopy, and I haven't seen a single flaming groupie. So I think it's clear somebody lied to me, and women aren't turned on by punk rock poetry. But I'm having one more try just to prove I'm not a cynic. So I've got myself a gig at the Sex Addiction Clinic. If I can't get a shag there, I won't get one anyway. Thank you. Thank you. This is, um, Cheers. I, uh, I do. This is. I do struggle. I've always struggled with relationships. Um, and for ages, I didn't know what it was. But what I've realised is, it's. I, I become attracted to the most bizarre and grotesque women. You know, the sort of women who uh, you see on the television. These weird, horrible, evil sort of women. They're the ones that I, that I bust after. And I started to panic because I thought, perhaps I've got no standards whatsoever. Perhaps there's no woman on this earth who is so low, so evil, so inherently horrid that even I wouldn't be prepared to get off with that. So this is a poem that I've written about that. It's about getting to grips with that. It's called The Lowest of the Low. And it's a bit personal, so. It started in my childhood, in the yard with bricks and trellis. I'd sit and dream my days away with thoughts of dear Ruth Ellis. Stories of the Holocaust and the Nazis got me down. But that didn't stop me having hopes of shagging Eva Brown. Sometimes I'd get emotional, my eyes all red and misty, at the prospect of a 69 with Agatha Christie. I'd search through Middle England, I'd wander through the heartland, just hoping for some rough and tumble with that gorgeous Barbara Cartland. One night I came on drunk and put on stockings and suspenders, while staring at a freeze frame still of pat out of EastEnders. My teenage years came and went in something of a flurry, just hoping to be in the bed of Edwina Curry. I'd travel any distance, I'd pay any sum of cash to have some plastic Botox sex with that gargoyle, Leslie Ash. I'd walk across the deserts through seas and storms, I'd toil for the chance to have a fondle of the breasts of Susan Boyle. But I hadn't really bargained for the outrage and the shocks when I said I'd like to spend the night with Amanda Knox. And it was all too much for them, they said I'd gone too far when they discovered my fixation with Grimsby's Maxine Carr. And they stared at me disgusted, they clearly weren't impressed when they caught me writing love letters to Rosemary West. And they shook their heads in anger, didn't take it all that kindly when they caught me masturbating of a snaps of Myra Hindley. So I'm obsessed with nasty women, mass murderers and witches, old hag spinsters, racist girls, witches, if she's a criminal or weirdo. I'd give my right arm to catch her. But even I'd rather have my nuts cut off than have a shag with Margaret Thatcher. Thank you. Um, can I, I'll, I'll do it. I think, I feel I should do this. I don't often do this, but I'll do it. And it how are we on swearing? Keep going, keep going, yeah. Okay. Um, it's, it's got a naughty swear like this, but I, 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 feel like, I feel like I should do it on today's... Uh, I don't know if anyone's been on strike today, and I don't know what your personal feelings are, but... Um, 
I think I should do this. This is, uh, this is why I actually wrote this, because um, a couple of years ago I thought I wanted to be the new Poet Laureate. And I thought I could do it, I thought it was achievable. Maybe not, maybe not. But I realised that to be a Poet Laureate, you've got to write about people and newsworthy people. So this is a poem that I've written about someone uh, who you might be aware of. Um, we'll try. Dave. I hope you don't mind me calling you Dave. I'm sure you won't because you're a man of the people. Dave. You've got perfect hair. And I know you care about politics and stuff, but that's not enough because, let's be honest, if it had been enough, and Tony Benn would probably have been Prime Minister years ago. He had lovely hair. Dave, I know you went to Eden where they have gay sex and that, but that's okay because no one cares about that sort of stuff. And anyway, it only makes you public school gay, not proper gay. Dave, I think comedians are lovely creatures and it's important to be able to adapt to your environment. It means you're flexible, and it in no way indicates that you might be a duplicitous chancer. Dave, I love it when you ride your bike. It's like you're changing the world all on your own. Dave, I know that when you make your speech at the party conference, you won't get sweat patches under your arms like Tony Blair, or let your mouth go wonky like Gordon Brown. And I think that good underarm hygiene and control of your facial features are essential requirements for a Prime Minister. Dave, I know the mockers say you lack substance, that your policies are weak and ill-conceived, and that your success is merely a result of a sequence of economic and social disasters that you've found yourself handily placed to benefit from. But I don't think that should be an issue. Not when you dress as smartly as you do. Dave, you've been our leader now for over a year, so I think it's time that people came to terms with the fact that you're a vacuous cult. Thank you. Sorry. Apologies for this well. Um, okay, I'll do one more, two more? Two more. No, a couple more. Okay. Um, we'll go with this one. Um, this is um, this is a I'll, I'll, I'll do another song. This is about national identity. Um, uh, I don't know what your feelings are. Um, mine are quite ambivalent, um, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. This is a poem that I wrote um, after I'd seen funnily enough it was a it was a poem that I wrote just after I'd heard that the Queen the Queen, God, God rest her soul, God, not there. God save her, the Queen was worried about our national identity, which I thought was fairly interesting that the Queen, you know, uh, the daughter of a German who married a Greek, was worried about the English identity, but that seemed a bit ironic. Well, this is a poem that I've, I've written, so this is called So This Is England. So this is England, full of prejudice and pride. This is England, the Jekyll and the Hyde. This is England, where contrast contradictions and coffee cups collide. This is England where hope and glory died. To be born English is to win first prize in the lottery of life. A man gets lucky at his local bookie and beats up his wife. Where boarded up schools and tuition fees are the legacy of new labour. While a lonely fellow ain't pints of Stella takes a knife to his next door neighbour. So this is England, full of... Sorry, I've, I've messed that up. I shouldn't have done that one. Forget that. I do apologise. I do apologise. I'll do one I know. I'll do one I know. This is called, um... I can't get a job. I can't get a job. I can't get a job. I've got no skill, got no ability, I can't move, got no agility, no head for heights, no feet for walking. Don't like listening, don't like talking. I can't get a job. I can't work in a shop. I can't work in a shop. I got a no from nettles, I don't suit suits. I got a snub from subway, the boot from boots. I got a negative text from next. I got crap from gap. I got rejection from French connection. I can't get a job. I can't think laterally, can't hit the ground running. I'm not a self-starter, I'm not cunning. I'm not a team player, I'm not proactive. I can't build rapport or be interactive. I can't be a salesman or a bank teller. I even got turned down to be a big issue seller. I can't get a job. I've got no skill, got no ability. I can't move, got no agility. No head for heights, no feet for walking. Don't like listening, don't like talking. But then, out of the blue, I got a job. I actually got a job. Where I don't need brains and I don't need flair. Don't need to focus, no need to prepare. No need to show meaning, no need to be deep. I could do this job in my sleep. To call it a job's a complete misnomer. I could do this stuff in a coma. Don't need charm or personality, the job is steeped in triviality. Don't need words that make much sense. Just need bullshit and pretense. Don't need to make out like it's real. The job is cliched, dull and stale. But I've got a job. You've guessed it, folks. I'm writing scripts for Hollyoaks. Okay.
finish this one. Um, this is Rich mentioned that I, I don't now live in, on the avenues. Um, and I've also mentioned that I was brought up on a council estate. Um, and so this is a poem that I've written. It's a blues poem which sort of um, brings together the two sides of those coins. And it's called The Avenues Blues. I've got the brought up on a council estate but now living on the avenues blue. And I've got the brought up on a council estate but now living on the avenues blues. I've got the brought up on a council estate but now living on the avenues blues. They've all got shoes, shiny shoes, they're not like my shoes, they've got special shoes. I have my dinner at 12 and my tea at 5. My mates come round for poker, I don't have a whisk drive. No one down the avenues has spoken to me since the day that I arrived. My neighbours meet for badminton, I play darts in the shed. I can't quote Dostoevsky or sprinkle my conversations with the things that Spinoza said. I go red, I feel ideologically dead because I never buy organic food and I don't bake my own bread. I've got the brought up on a council estate but now living on the avenues blues. I've got the brought up on a council estate but now living on the avenues blues. I've got the brought up on a council estate but now living on the avenues blues. They've all got news. Important news. It's not like my news. They've got special news. I don't grow any vegetables. I never drink green tea. I don't offset my air miles by planting a new tree. I don't have an opinion on the global economy. I don't know what I'm meant to say when I see a work of art. On cold mornings in the street, I'm the only one whose car won't start. They all laugh at Eddie Izzard, but I get more amused by seeing someone lighting up a fart. I've got the brought up on a council estate, but now living on the avenues blues. I've got the brought up on a council estate, but now living on the avenues blues. I've got the brought up on a council estate, but now living on the avenues blues. They've all got views, important views. They're not like my views, they've got special views. I don't have conversations about my kitchen's colour scheme. And I've got a letter of rebuke from the Avenue's conservation team because apparently stone cladding's not appropriate. And at dinner parties, I see them raise their eyebrows when I ask for salad cream. We were having a lasagna, what else was I going to put on it? And they've all named their sons and daughters after a fruit. Pomegranate, for fuck's sake. And they've all got leaflets for worthy causes that they want to distribute. And I may be a brute, but I don't find it cute to see three-year-old boys dressed in full morning suits, especially when they're only going to cheeky monkeys. I've got the brought up on a council estate, but now living on the avenues blues. I've got the brought up on a council estate, but now living on the avenues blues. I've got the brought up on a council estate, but now living on the avenues blues. They all give clues, important clues. They're not like my clues. They give special clues. They've got a baby grand in the front window. They'd play it if they could. They read Italian classics because the Times Literary Supplement said they're awfully good. They watch French art house films because Paul Morley said they should. So you can keep your Donatella and your man's umbrella and your holiday in Marbella and your Renaissance novella. You can keep your false intentions and your middle class conventions and your house extensions and your crime preventions and your neurotic apprehensions and your repressed sexual tensions. You can keep all your pretensions, because I'm not that kind of fella. And you can keep the avenues, because I'm moving to Kerkella. Thank you very much. Thank you.